I could be on Mars right now. Genuinely. Mm. Like, people think, oh, Mars, what's it going to be like? I'm like, I can imagine myself being on Mars right now. Mars is right here like, on Earth. Look over there, like, like, that looks like a picture from Mars. Part of me can't believe we're here. It's quite surreal. As in, once you create the vessel, once you create the framework, you can travel on that, you can voyage, you can do things. Improvisation is just a taking of like, you have a starting point. Mm. Like it could go anywhere after mm. that. Like, mm. That's a big takeaway for like, for just life. Life to me just felt very uncomfortable and, and painful. I didn't feel good being me. I felt that I was different than everyone else. I felt that I wasn't as good as everyone else. The first time I did an opiate was a prescribed pill, which was a, like a Vicodin. It was a moment where all the anxiety and all the social anxiety and all the stuff that I dealt with my whole life kind of washed away and I felt content and, and I felt felt good in my own skin. I instantly couldn't imagine living life without that. I made a conscious decision that that's what I needed. That's what it was missing in my life and that's that was the answer. And so that from that point on, I searched out that answer. By the time it was heroin, it rapidly progressed to losing everything and being a homeless heroin junkie. How, how did you go from being a homeless junkie to being an incredibly successful husband, entrepreneur, sponsor, activist, role model? How, how the fuck does that happen? One day at a time. <laughs> Baby steps. Uh, the pain got so great that I was willing to change everything. It was either kill myself or do something different. What are you trying to cultivate at this space? I pretty much have an open door policy, so everyone feels welcome. It's just a place that people can come to and do their thing, whether it's writing a screenplay or an album or video, or even just to decompress, quiet their mind. There's so much chatter in the city, psychic chatter. You come out here and you just, I see people, just their body language changes right away. So just to have a place that's open for that. People come back and they bring other people with them. So the community starts to grow. It's crucial to our survival. And I think being creative is too. And to be able to step away from the madness that's going on and just know that something like this is contagious. The first word that pops into mind is stillness. There's a lot of vibrancy here and there's a community here and there's arts community and there's people, but the nature and the animals, it just feels like a still place. And I think that's why you're able to be recharged and uh, to relax. I envision myself wanting to be able to like flit around the landscape here in the desert. So I go for runs every day. It makes me feel more a part of the system here. I do want to be a little bit badass. Why not? My father, um, I didn't really know him until I was 25. So I developed a relationship with him as an adult. So he passed away um, when I was bidding on this place. I went to London to take care of him, he had cancer. And I 
boxed up all of his stuff and put it on a slow boat and it got here a few weeks before I moved into the ranch. Do any relationships gonna teach you about yourself and, and, and will stretch you. Like with him, I, I took care of him when he was dying and I, he didn't have a role in my life growing up and you know, really didn't take care of me at all. And, uh, but I think it's the most selfless, loving thing to do is to help someone pass away. I call experiences like that Jedi training <laughs> to just like not be overcome with your emotions so much and be able to ground yourself and just kind of make your way through it and just pull yourself into a bigger picture frame of mind and not get so mired in the sadness or, you know, I didn't feel like he was thankful enough during that time. Um, so just being able to let go of the ego. Yeah. I'm one wrong decision away from being right back to where I was. So every single day it takes work and every single day I need to move forward and I need to, need to better my life in, in some way or another. I still only have 24 hours. If I'm looking too far ahead and I should be here and I should be there and I should have this, I should have that, then it brings me out of the present. I gotta stay right now. What is it about being a barber? Because I know it's deeper for you than just cutting hair. What is it about that particular service industry that you um, connect with? First off, it's, it's an art form. I'm an artist, you know what I mean? It's an art form where we're essentially sculpting. I'm able to be of service to, to my community and I'm able to uh, connect with people on a personal level and I really connect with that part. Howdy, brother. <laughs> Thanks, brother. For the last six years or so, I've been uh, building up my self-worth and self-love. I really needed to do that. And I really needed to do it in a deeper level than like, you know, yeah, okay, I went through a breakup. I had to do, I have abandonment. My mom abandoned me when I was a child and continuously. So a lot of that stuff I had to work on. So I call it like almost like reverse brainwashing. I had to brainwash myself into that self-love. And it's one of those things where you think you don't need it anymore and then you can forget. The internal dialogue is huge. We're so cruel to ourselves. We say things to ourselves that we would never say to our friends or our family. One speaks to themselves the most, more than anyone else in the world. So you better be kind. And your body and your mind listen to what you're saying. So it's important to be nice to yourself. <laughs>